What's up, my harmonious business owners? Back with another Harmonious at Lunch. This was supposed to be a live episode. It's going to be a solo episode. We have another sickness. And let's just start right there because as an operations nerd, if you will, um, I have obviously just identified a bottleneck in the operation of this show. The whole goal that I had with starting this podcast was... Sorry, I hope you heard that. My mic wasn't in my way, in the way. But anyway, the whole goal that I had with starting this podcast was bring on a really cool guest we could talk to daily, every single day, every single day of the week, throughout the year, and talk live and have a live episode broadcast to the different social media platforms and then repost the episode as a podcast. So if you're watching this live or you're catching the replay, um, you may have noticed that it's been a couple of times now, a couple of episodes where I've said, supposed to have a guest, but we've got a last minute cancellation. Um, that kind of sucks, in my opinion. So I'm just going to put this out there that I have it's taken me a couple weeks, but I've identified a bottleneck and I'll have to rework the idea for this whole show. I mean, there's obviously ways to go live without being there. Shout out to StreamYard. I use StreamYard to film and, and broadcast this, um, this show. But the actual production filming and live streaming is stupid, in my opinion. Um, not to say it can't be done, but it, this is not my product. Like my product in the world is not this podcast. So for me to stress and worry about if I'll have a guest, if I won't have a guest was just a poor design in my opinion. So what I will be doing is pre-recording the episode, still going live and posting them as a podcast, but the logistics of doing a live show are not in service to the audience. And I want to bring cool guests on this show. That's the whole point. We've had 24, 25 amazing guests already just in the past month or so. And I want to continue to do more of that, but deliver at a high level. Um, so to not fall short of that, I do have something prepared today in line with the topic of know your money, grow your business and setting your business up for financial success. We are going to have Sarah on the show. We're going to be recording her episode next week. So uh, this will get you there in the meantime, but I, I happen to know a little bit about this area. I'm no financial expert, but I do want to go over some things that help me really get a concrete financial foundation in my business a number of years ago and something that I've stuck with ever since. Um, so if you have never heard of the author by the name of Mike Michalowicz or by the book of the book Profit First, you're probably living under a rock. And I just want you to know that you're watching this on the internet. So you have access to the same information. Go get that book. Go look up Mike Michalowicz. Um, but I want to go over quickly how I use the Profit First system and how it can totally change the financial lens that you see your business with. So this will be a short episode. Uh, I'm going to share my screen in just a second and we'll, we'll go through this. But just know that this works for businesses of any size if you don't have money management system or skills in your business, what I will say is your accountant is not the answer and your bookkeeper is also not the answer. Those people are great for what they do, but as far as running your business and foreseeing cash flow and trends and all that stuff, accountants and CPAs, unless you have that system really set up and dialed in with them, probably not the best source for this information. And that was my trouble in the beginning. I, I thought having a bookkeeper and an accountant would help me uh, run my business and manage my money. And I could not be further from the truth. So that's where I sought out this solution. And I said, um, what can I do to get a handle on my money, but also not be an accountant in the process because I have no interest in that. Um, and this that's when I stumbled upon Profit First for the first time. And it radically changed my world. Um, I went from struggling to take a paycheck for the first probably year I was in business when I, and then I found this out and I started making tens, twenties and hundreds of thousands of dollars in profit every year because of this system. It, it's not mine. It's Mike Michalowicz. Shout out to him. Um, and please go learn more if you haven't already, but I'm going to give you the brief overview. If this piques your interest, um, DM me, I'll connect you with Mike and, or just go look him up, but let's go through this real quick. So I'm going to share my screen and we'll go through, um, how I've done this in my business. So here we go. 
Um, so I'm actually going to start on a different chart here. I'm going to start over here. So again, profit first system. I'm not a profit first professional. They have a whole organization of accountants and bookkeepers um, who are certified to help you with this in your business. So I would encourage you to look into that. But basically, this, this is the chart that we're going to use to base off our how we split up our money. Um, so looking through this, you have your different revenue ranges up here, and then you have all of these um, different percentages and, and breakdowns down here. So we'll go through this really quick. Again, this is high level. I want you to have a, a bite-sized understanding of what this system is and did for me, how you can implement it. And then if you want to go deeper, go connect with Mike um, and, and figure and get the book and figure out how you can implement this in your business. So the revenue range, um, now that's obvious, right? What I will say is that if you run a business with um, a lot of material costs or subcontractors and you want to, and you're trying to figure out where your real revenue range is, I'll give you an example to figure this out. Um, and this is what happened to me. So I, the cutoff is 25%. So if your material costs or subcontractor, subcontractor costs are over 25% of your revenue, your real revenue is actually what's left over. So let's say you run a software business, you're um, you don't have any subcontractors, your gross revenue is a million dollars and you don't have any subcontractors. You would be in the one to $5 million category. Now, let's say you have that same business, but you subcontract all of the coding and programming and, and most of your labor is outsourced and you spend half a million dollars a year on just your subcontracted labor. This could be the same thing with products. If you spend half a million dollars a year to sell a million dollars worth of physical products, then you're going to fall in this half a million to $1 million category. So just that's an important note that you need to understand before going into this. Um, but then, so we come down here and these are the advised percentages that Mike has come up with from analyzing numbers, of different companies um, so that you can figure out where you should start. Excuse me. These are your targets. This is not where you should start. But this is what a really good company in this financial range would look like. Um, and that's important to remember too. So look, if you're, let's use that million dollar example, that means your profit should be 10%, your owner's pay should be 10%, your tax should be 15, and then the rest of your operating expenses should be 65. Now, the whole thing behind the profit first system is that the normal equation is sales minus expenses equals profit. And what Mike has identified is the opposite. It's that actually, um, based on the uh, Parkinson's law, you use a resource to the extent which you have it, the sales minus profit will equal expenses. So if you prioritize your profit first, your owners pay your profit, you put that first, you take those things off the table, you will find a way to run your business with what's, with what's left over, which is backwards from what most people think. Now, I love this because uh, what if we're a disruptor? We disrupt the way people think about their businesses. And this is a perfect example of how Mike has disrupted the way you think about accounting, finance, and managing the cash in your business. So we couldn't be more in love with this system. Um, but so check this out. So you, those are the target allocation percentages. You may not start there. The first step for you is to print out your P&L for the last 12 months and figure out what these things actually were. But this is the chart that we're going to base our numbers off of. Um, as targets based on the revenue size. So this is an example of the uh, of a um, a chart breakdown that Mike has that available to you, where you're going to go in and fill in your actual numbers. So this is just an example I found off the internet. But basically, what you would do is take the 275k that was the annual revenue here. The material and subcontractors are 110,000, which means the real revenue is 165. Now. That's what I mentioned before. If you have a lot of material and subcontractors, you got to subtract that out. If you don't have any um, cost of goods or subcontractors that are over 25% of your gross revenue, then your real revenue is your top line revenue. It would be, it would be the same thing um, because your employees, your operating expenses, all of that would fall into all the way down to the operating expenses. So you go through this chart and you look at, okay, what was the, and the first line is actual. So what was your actual profit? In this case, zero. What was the actual owner's K 98, uh, owner's pay 98 K tax was nine operating expenses was 58 K. So the person, this is the current percentage that we're looking at in the second column. So profit was, um, or what, this is the, what percentage based on the other chart it should fall in. So it should be 5%. Owner's pay should be 50%. 
tax should be 15% and operating expenses should be as a target 30%. Then you calculate the difference here. You use parentheses for negative and you use just the number for a positive. And the fix is basically which direction does that need to go? So obviously in this scenario, the profit needs to go up because it's at zero. It should be 5%. So it should be $8,200. So that needs to increase. Um, owner's pay was a little high, so that can actually come down. Tax was what actually was paid was 9,000, which is a good thing. What should be allocated was 15%. So what was allocated was less than what was paid, but that's a good thing because what was actually paid is less than what was anticipated. Now that's a good thing. And that's the one thing I love about this system from Mike is he has you allocate tax and profit beforehand. And that is so important. I've caught myself in a bind a number of times before I've stumbled upon this system. Um, if you don't allocate money for taxes, the government still wants it. Imagine that, those bastards. Anyway, that's how I feel about taxes. But if you follow this system, the money's set aside in advance, and then anything left over at the end of the year. So out of that 24,000, even though only 9K was paid, that means you'd have $15,000 left over that you toss right to profit. If the government doesn't want it, definitely don't give it to them. There's some life advice for you but that's your money. So then the profit in this scenario would have been covered just by the taxes, but it was also covered by the owner's pay. Um, and then the, well, the other thing is the operating expenses were a little too high in this scenario. So we would want to reduce those as well. But you know, this is, this is a healthy company. They're making money. They're not losing money. Even though the profit was zero, they've overcommitted things in, in other scenario, in other areas of the business. So that's okay. Um, now here's a fun one for you. So what I did was Instead of having to think about this, I just created this simple little Excel spreadsheet or Google sheet, if you will. Um, and I'll send this to you. If you just message me, put it in the comments, I'll reach out and give you the link. I'm not going to send you through a landing page or any, any of that BS. I just want to, I want to give this to you. If this system is something that's of interest to you, if any of this is interesting so far, um, go read the book, go shout out and follow Mike. Um, so you can learn a little bit more about it. But if you want to dive in and just have this semi-automated, this was a game changer because in the beginning for me, it was it, it was a little cumbersome to figure out like, oh, OK, do I have to like review my financials at the end of the month and figure this out? Um, no. So every time I got money that came into my business, first things first, I had all of these different bank accounts set up. So everything you see on the screen in gray, um, actually every single one of these accounts, I had a bank account for. So I had over. I think I had 12 bank accounts in my business at one point, which sounds overwhelming, but it's really not when you run it through the system. So what I did was every time money came in, and this could have been, I usually did this like once a week, and then I would run payroll two times a month. So I knew I was always ahead of the game with this. But what you're going to do is put whatever the amount is that comes in, in the deposit uh, box here. So let's just use round numbers here. Uh, $50,000. So if $50,000 comes into your business, as soon as you enter that in, it would auto populate the rest of the spreadsheet. So all of these things are calculated based on the percentages that were uh, on that chart that I just showed you. But these were, this is what was calculated and these were my targets in my business. So I'll send you the sheet and then I'll, I'll even just tell you how to go in and update it based on once you figure out your current allocating percentages, you can just tweak the numbers and the calculations will still work. Um, so basically every $50,000 or $50,000 came into my business, what I would do is in this first category, I would calculate um, 3% less. Actually, this was 0.3% less. So um, let me change that. 97.5. That would calculate out for uh, credit card fees. Everything in this business at the time, almost all of the revenue that I generated was through credit card processing. Um, so if you only take cash or checks or you just don't really care about that, I mean, that's totally fine. Um, but this is how I knew. So, okay, whatever was in the bank account it, and it wasn't Stripe either. So it wasn't like the fees were coming out in advance. It was taken out at the end of the month. I had some other merchant processor. So I had to account for this money because I knew it was going to come back out of this account at the end of the month. And I didn't want to be caught in a bind where, oh, look, from every $50,000, I'm going to lose $1,250. You don't want to have $0 in the bank and then owe the credit card company $1,250 on the last day of the month. Not a fun position to be in. I've been there and I'm sure you have too, but this is a way to prevent that. So the next category over here is materials. Now I told you I had, this was a business that had 
sold materials where the cost of goods was greater than 25% of the revenue. So what I did was instead of making that part of my operating costs, that was actually a, a metric that I managed. We would always shoot for a target of keeping that, the material cost, the cost of goods sold between 25 and 33%. That's what our pricing was based off of that. And the, the financial system we had in place was based off of those numbers. So what I did was I went even bigger than that. And I said, if you look in the formula bar up here, um, I accounted for 45%. Now what that does is it gives me a buffer. It accounts for uh, buying inventory beforehand and a number of different things. There was a lot of reasons behind that. But basically what I said was I never want to be in a situation where I cannot afford the materials to buy something before the order is complete or, or needed in that scenario. So all of our customers paid up front. So we had the money to do it. It was set aside in this account. And then I had the money to pay the vendors on time up front, which got me better rates on the product. So it was even easier to achieve the 25 to 33%. Um, the remaining here, this would be the real revenue, if you will. So this number is what we're working with. We've taken out the material percentage. We've taken out the 3% less. And that is what is left over out of this $50,000. So that is what me as the business owner, and in this case, the whoever is managing your finances, your day-to-day -day finances, that is what we're working with. A lot of times I see business owners who um, they say, oh, I made $100,000. And it's, it's these round generalized numbers. If you're not thinking of what percentage of that, that $100,000 is going to you and each portion of your business, you're you're failing miserably at running your business. And not to say you're doing a bad job, it's just you don't have a clear picture. How, how could you see where your money's going if you don't have something like this set up? Now, some of you do. Some of you may have a more complicated financial system. I know a lot of people have, who have a CFO dashboard set up, and that's, that's okay. But what I love about this system is it's real time, it's small business friendly, and it's idiot friendly too. That's that's what attracted me to it. Let's just be completely honest with you. Um, so I didn't have to rely on my my bookkeeper. I would just look at this and say, oh, cool, $50,000 come in. What does that mean? Ah, cool. It means I have $8,000 set aside for payroll. Got it. That's all I need to know. Um, so really, really important to have something like this set up. So then what I would do is you look over here. I would have the, I had 15% set up for profit. I had 15% set up for tax. So those two numbers were the same. Then I would have uh, capital purchase. So I, I was always planning in advance for buying new equipment, upgrading equipment. Even if, if equipment breaks down, I wanted to have something in the bank to make sure that I wasn't going to run dry or run into a scenario where let's say, you know, if a, a machine did break down and I had to even service it, well, I could pull from that to pay the tech or pay for the parts. Or if it's, you know, the end of the year, um, or I have a need to grow my business with more equipment, then I don't have to take a loan. I become my own bank because I've set aside this money. So every $50,000 that came in, I would set aside in this calculation, 3%, $804. You multiply that out. And if you're making $50,000 a week, a month, whatever, then it's just a matter of time. It's, it's a calculation. You can say, okay, that means that for every $50,000, so every week, every month, whatever, it would only take me 16 weeks to be able to afford this new piece of equipment. So you avoid the banks, you avoid the loans, you're planning ahead. You're hopefully earning at least a little interest on this money in the meantime. But this is an account that's set aside for uh, disasters if needed or purchasing equipment or servicing equipment. So um, it's I, I loved incorporating the future into this, this simple method. So it's not like, okay, living paycheck to paycheck and sorting my money. No, I'm planning for the future. I'm, I'm reserving for tax. I'm reserving for profit. I'm reserving for capital purchases. And then we got into the nitty gritty and said, okay, what's left to run the business? So when all of that is set aside, then I could say, okay, what was the owner's comp? So I knew from every $50,000 that came in to me was going to go uh, 5,300 and change. Okay, cool. And what's left to run the business, the operating costs of the business. Now, remember, I took the cost of goods out in materials. So this is the daily operations excluding cost of goods. I had 4,500 and change left over. And then to make payroll, which I already mentioned was uh, twice a month, was 8,000, just over $8,000. 
So using this system, I was able to say, okay, every dollar that comes in the door, I know where it's going. I moved it into the physical bank accounts. And then I could ha I had that set up. So this was my this became my dashboard and my bank became my dashboard. I didn't have to have a complicated CFO dashboard or anything like that. I didn't have to lean on my bookkeeper, my accountant. I could just visually see immediately and I knew where everything was going and what its purpose was. So I could plan for the future. I knew I had profit at the end of the year. Or if I wanted to invest in a machine, I knew I had the capital purchase money set aside. I knew I had the tax money set aside for the damn government. But you have to pay them or else they get really angry. But it was okay because I knew it was there. So I, I always knew my finances were under control. I just had to manage the revenue in this simplified scenario. I knew that if I hit, let's say I, I knew my payroll was going to be $7,000 for the month. All I needed to do was make $50,000 in the month. And when it trickled down to payroll at the, at the very end here, I would have more than enough to pay the bills. That is what you need to know as a business owner. You need to, you need to take as much of this out of your mind as possible so you can put your focus where it needs to be. And that's why I absolutely love this system. And it, it's, it's how you know your money and grow your business and set yourself up for financial success. So I hope that was really valuable. Um, like I said before, let me know in the comments if you if you want me to send this to you and then you could just plug your numbers in. I'll send you all this stuff. Just reach out to me, uh, DM, and I will uh, I'll send that over to you. No, no funnels, no landing pages, no nothing. Just I want to help as many small business owners, especially alleviate, alleviate financial stress as possible, um, because I know that's a that's a sticky point for a lot of people. Um, and I don't want you to feel that way. I I've been there, done that. I love Mike Michalowicz. Shout out to him. Shout out to Profit First. Um, if any of this resonated, please go check that out. Get the book. Uh, follow him on social media. He's hysterical too. So if you haven't if you haven't seen him speak, I would say get the book, but also get the audio book because they're they're so much fun to listen to. Um, and and reach out. I'll share that with you. So that was today's episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We're talking a lot about metrics, and we're talking about a lot a lot about RAD, which is where your financial optimization will come in. So. Um, if you need help in those areas of your business, we'd love to help you. I hope this was super helpful for you. I tried to cram a lot in a short amount of time. Um, but let me know what else you want to hear. Tomorrow when we come back on the episode, we will have a guest, at least at this point, if they don't cancel. So we're going to work some stuff out in the next couple of weeks. But I'm, I'm excited to have you here listening. Give me your feedback. Let me know what you love, what you hate, what you want to hear more of. And I'll make sure that we bring that to you. Uh, on a daily basis. I'm still committed to delivering a daily podcast, just the execution is going to change a little bit. So excited to see you on the next one. I hope you have a great day. And that was another episode of Harmonious at Lunch.